when I'm sitting there right there next to him, when I'm hearing them saying, this is what Shakira Stewart was saying to Kim Porter on the phone that made him mad. That made him so mad at Shakira Stewart when he went to L.A. Reed party, hit him with the chair. So as it turns out, the way that Diddy knew about what was happening between Kim Porter and Shakir Stewart was that he had wired Kim's house and tapped her phone. So what's to say that he didn't continue following and threatening Shakir even after he broke up with Kim? And after learning about how Diddy broke a chair over Shakir's head and literally left him there to bleed out, child, it's beginning to look like Diddy was the one who pushed Shakir to his death, all because he fell in love with Kim. Allegedly, Diddy's kids are also beginning to see him for who he really is, and word on the street is that Quincy is just about done to done done done. No wonder he was out here sharing creepy songs and cringy clown makeup on his birthday. But you know what? Kim's father, Jake Porter, also spoke up about the allegations that had made rounds about Diddy recently. And he said that he is, for lack of a better word, disgusted. I know, many of us had no idea that Kim's dad was even still alive. Anyway, it might also surprise you to learn that he was speaking more about Cassie and not about Kim. And that is making a lot of people look at him sideways. Like, what what does he know exactly? Well, we'll get to that shortly, but first, let's figure out exactly what Diddy may have done to Kim's ex, Shakir. Okay, for a bit of background, Shakir began his career by distributing flyers at clubs before he started working at LaFace Records and Hitco Music Publishing. After that, he started working at Def Jam, where he was the one responsible for signing some of the top artists in entertainment, from Rick Ross to Young Jeezy. When he previously worked with the Hitco Publishing Company, he signed Beyonce, and when he worked with Arista Records, he signed Ciara, and these are just some of the artists he signed. Unfortunately, in November 2008, Shakir unalived himself, and his friend Herb Smith said in a police report that he went over to Shakir's home at the request of his fiancée, Michelle Rivers, to talk to Shakir about his change in behavior that concerned her. Michelle told police that she noticed a change in Shakir when he arrived home on October 31st, but he wouldn't tell her if anything was wrong. And after that, they went out for Halloween, and she called Herb to talk to him after they returned home. Now, Herb told the police that he noticed a behavioral change in Shakir when he arrived at the house, and he said that Shakir was wigging out. In the police report, Herb also said that while trying to talk to him, Shakir began telling him to leave, and he told him to go back home to his wife and children because he did not need to be at his house. Then when Herb stepped outside the house, he heard a loud bang from inside the house, and when he went inside, he found Shakir on the master bedroom floor. After his death, Michelle released a statement through the record label that read, over the past several weeks, Shakir's behavior was inconsistent with the man we all know and love. As much as we all tried to help him, Shakir was in deep pain and largely suffering in silence. Then Def Jam also released a statement at the time, reading, Shakir was an amazing man in every sense of the word, a truly incredible friend and father who was an inspiration to not only our artists and employees, but to his family and the many people that had the privilege of counting him as a friend. But the thing is, his death was shocking to a lot of people, especially considering that most of the people who were around at the time said that Shakir was loving, loyal, funny, supportive, smart, and most of all, he loved life. So it didn't make sense that he would one day get up and decide to end it all. And that brings us to the connection with Diddy. So this story about Shakir came up again after Rolling Stone dropped a damning article revealing stories of Diddy's alleged behavior in very disturbing detail. They spoke to dozens of former employees and collaborators, and almost all of them said the exact same thing about Diddy. There were actually people confirming that Diddy was cruel to Kim him, with Mark Curry even talking about what he himself witnessed, saying, I remember Kim used to go through a lot of stuff. If you live around them, you get to see the toxic relationship. I think every relationship he had that I experienced around him was like that. Now, when it comes to Kim, one particular story shared involved Diddy taking revenge on Shakir for dating Kim, and Shakir's own mom said that there was an incident that involved Diddy threatening her son because Diddy never allowed anyone else to ever date Kim. Apparently, Diddy left Shakir bleeding on a hotel floor in Italy after breaking a chair on his head. And Shakir's mom narrated that ordeal to Rolling Stone, saying, he left him bleeding on a hotel floor in Italy. He had to have stitches and then he threatened him. That's when I said, you need to get out of this business. This man is crazy. You see, the thing with Diddy is that he made sure that if he was not with Kim, nobody else was allowed to have her. In fact, I remember when Kim previously told Essence that while they were separated and he was dating Jennifer Lopez, Diddy would call her 50, 60 times a day, adding, it was like my life was not my own. He was very, very intrusive. Baby, this thing about Diddy never wanting Kim to be with anyone else is something that Gene Deal also confirmed. He had access to Kim, no matter if he was with her or not, all the time. He never lost access to Kim. 
he never gave Kim up or Kim never stopped dealing with him. And he mm -hmm. had she had open door, door policy with him at all times. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. even, when she, even when he was with J-Lo. So because Shakir was dating Kim, Diddy had to teach him a lesson. But the only thing we are struggling with is if Diddy continued with the threats and actually frustrated him in the industry to the point where he unalived himself. And you know that what Diddy did to Shakir is only one of the things that has been added to the list of the never ending allegations. Something else that came up in the Rolling Stone article is that Diddy's behavior actually started long before he became who he is known to be today. And we had several women who attended how University with Diddy say that they saw signs of a controlling personality and rage issues decades ago. So it's not just Shakir who experienced this uncontrollable rage. Well, allegedly, since the last allegations, Kim's family has been trying to make sense of things. And at this point, they really want to know what happened to Kim. And that includes Quincy. Recently, Kim Porter's father also reacted to everything that has been happening with Diddy. And y'all can bet that he had a lot to say. Jake Porter told Rolling Stone that he was disgusted by the recently released footage of Diddy grabbing, shoving, and kicking Cassie during a 2016 altercation. He said, you could say I was disgusted with the video and I wouldn't treat my enemy like that. It was despicable. I couldn't believe it. I was in Vietnam and I wouldn't do that to my enemy. Kim's father also added that the horrible video has now given him a different outlook on his daughter's former partner, saying that he didn't know he could stoop that low and he wouldn't even do a dog like that. He also shared that Kim loved Diddy, but she just couldn't live with him in the same home because he was a very jealous person. He also said, Said they both loved each other. Kim's love was legitimate. Puffy's love, I don't know what he calls love. You know what I mean? I really don't think he has any idea what love is. Jake also answered no when asked if he had ever seen Diddy get physical with his daughter Kim during their marriage, but added that anything he had seen was never to that extent. But it made him wonder. Now you see how Kim's father is only speaking about Cassie's video and saying that he didn't know that Diddy could stoop that low. Baby, to a lot of people, it's giving. The dad turned a blind eye to what was happening to Kim because the money was coming in. I mean, and how disconnected could he have possibly been to his daughter not to notice what literally the entire world was noticing? I don't know guys, it's a bit suspicious, right? But do you think that Kim's dad is beginning to look a little sus? Was he also on some sort of payroll? Or was he just never close to Kim? And why is it that we are only hearing about him now? Child, we didn't even know he was alive. Baby, just tell me what you think and while at it, also let me know what you think happened to Shakir Stewart in the comments section below.